My task for today is to try and see if I can work out why the brass bearing cage of this roller bearing is seized. I've been carefully trying to tap away at it. I've managed to loosen the rollers, but I still can't get the cage to turn. And if I carefully tap on these rivets, I can get the cage to turn, but it's extremely tight. And there's no way that it's gonna work installed in the vehicle, especially when it's hot. While it's possible to get a brand new one remanufactured, I'm sure it's gonna cost the national debt to do it and it could take months. I went fossicking through my supply of vintage bearings out of the Stug 3. I did find an SKF bearing with the same looking construction. This one here. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing to look at. I'm just about to split this apart to have a bit of a look inside. If it looks feasible to try and pull this apart, I'm going to have a go at doing the same thing on this. See what the issue is and see if we can fix it. I went through with the angle grinder and a cutting disc and carefully ground the rivets off, putting almost no force into this so I don't need to worry about distorting the cage. Now, I've always wondered how they've managed to retain the rollers, and if I'm careful... <laughs> Would you take a look at this? Yet another piece of incredible craftsmanship and engineering. When you think about this was all made out of solid chunks of brass, carefully machined to hold the roller, and to also enable this thing to rotate freely inside the bearing. Quite incredible. As this bearing is constructed exactly the same way except it's got much smaller rollers in it, I don't see any issue with uh, having to try and pull it apart. Nice. Normally I'd get very upset if someone was doing this with my tools, but soon as I'm doing it myself, I'm gonna use my pair of favorite flush cut side cutters to just carefully ease the rivets up and out. Yep, wants to come apart. Now for the big reveal to try and understand what's actually wrong with the bearing and its cage. Here we go. So taking the cage out, there actually seems to be some type of corrosion. Green, copper, brass has got a lot of copper in it. so. Perhaps over time there's been some sort of a electrolytic uh, action that's taken place and that could be why the bearing cage is a bit too tight in the housing. I'm starting to see some shiny marks on here which indicate that there's slight bulging of some of these parts. So I reckon we can clean that up with some fine files. You can actually see 
indents in the material here of where the rollers have been driven into this retainer plate. So there's obviously been a bit of mechanical overload to this as well too, but I'm pretty confident we can fix all that. So I've noticed another problem with our bearing. It's bulging from one side. The whole cage has been distorted out somewhat. So I've got to try and straighten that a little bit without breaking it, because if I break it, that's going to be a big disaster. I just put the cage back together. I gave it a little bit of a tweak and it straightened it a bit. So I don't want to push my luck too much further, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on getting these high spots off. Yeah, so already that's a big improvement. Many, many, many hours later, it's now rotating nice and freely. So I'm going to have a go at getting the rollers back in. <laughs> Lucky last. Yeah, look at that. So at the end of a really long day here at Ozarm, I've got good news and bad news. Good news is I'm still marvelling at the ease of movement of the bearing. Bad news, we're rapidly running out of time here at Oz Armour. It's close to beer o'clock, so that's all we've got time for this week. Stick around to find out what happens next with our bearing rescue.